The London Printer Show with Michelle Carter. Welcome to another episode of The London Preneur Show, where I interview a new entrepreneur while well, we're doing our countdown to our 100th episode. Today, I am with Dave Galloway, and he is DJ Alpha. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. So, what got you into DJing? Oh, boy. All right. Well, we're going to go back here. Um, when I was in high school, actually, I was uh, I was lucky enough to get a, a co-op at uh, Dr. Disc, old record store unfortunately not around anymore on Clarence Street in London mm -hmm. and uh, worked there every day from 11 to 2. Uh, worked, didn't get paid, um, but uh, I, uh, I got exposed to a lot of the DJ culture, a lot of the new records coming in, a lot of the new gear and totally fell in love with it. Obsessed, did you? Yeah, obsessed is probably the right word. So when did you decide to start a business DJing? Well, I DJed uh, ever, you know, ever since I, I started probably a year after uh, I had my co-op at Dr. Disc, uh, I DJed as much as I could, which at the time was probably, you know, once of every six months. Uh, uh, and then I DJed all the way through college uh, and then after college uh, doing the nightclub thing and stuff. And uh, about probably about six or seven years ago, I realized that um, despite my parents protest, uh, being a DJ could be a real life job. <laughs> And now you're proving them wrong. Now, every day, I'm proving them wrong. But for the record, I would like to state that they did always tell me I could uh, do whatever I wanted in life. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't all it wasn't all negative. It was just, uh, I'm sure like any parent, you're, you know, you're not going to... You're gonna, concerned. Yeah, yeah. You're a little concerned if your kid says he yeah. wants to be a DJ. Absolutely. DJ Alpha, where'd you get the name from? Ah, well, when we started, it was myself uh, and my best friend, and it was DJ Alpha and DJ Omega. Um, and it was, it was great, uh, for the short term. Uh, and then he went away to, uh, to Ottawa for university and DJ Alpha was on his own. <laughs> and it stuck. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much it. Yeah. So what services are you offering? Uh, so the core of what we do is, uh, is DJ service. Um, and it's a little more, uh, elaborate, I guess, uh, than an average DJ service. So we're very much a hands-on, you know, um, we use, we use turntables, we mix all our music. Uh, we do like, we like to do some remixes and things like that. Uh, so not just a straight up kind of press play kind of DJ service. Uh, beyond that, we've grown, uh, into lighting design, uh, photo booths, uh, music editing, uh, some remixes and stuff like that. So those are kind of the elements of, of what we offer. Music editing. Tell me more. <laughs> sure. So it's anything from, you know, we'll just make our own mashups for fun um, to we'll, uh, we'll do some music editings for kind of custom first dances or custom grand entrances for weddings. Um, so, you know, if you had an idea of like, oh, I love all these different songs. I don't know how to choose. Mm -hmm. Well, don't choose. We'll put them all together uh, and kind of make your own custom thing. Okay. Yeah. Just going into my other niche of horses, would you be able then to edit a song to the tempo of a horse rider. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head what the, the tempo of, of a horse, average horse ride would be, but... Uh, the horses have to have a certain tempo yeah. and a canter and a trot. So they mix up these programs and the song has to go according oh, to... Oh, the, then uh, for sure we could. Absolutely. We just really? need to figure out what those tempos are and then we can match the song to it. There's a new service. <laughs> Absolutely. There we go. Effective immediately. Heard it horse here trotting uh, music editing. Perfect. Done. We're going to patent it. <laughs> <laughs> so where would you like to be five years from now? Oh boy. Um, you know, I, I love, I love where I'm at right now, but I'm always kind of looking for the next thing to, to grow as much as I can. Um, in short, I'd love to do more of what I'm doing. Um, you know, just on a bigger scale as well. I would like to travel a little more. We've done some traveling in the past with, uh, with DJing and it's taken me to some pretty cool places and I definitely love to do some more of that. Yeah. Yeah. So are you DJing anywhere for New Year's? Eve yet? I am. Yeah, I actually, um, my uh, my amazing wife who supports this, despite the fact that it you know keeps me out of the home more often than it lets me be home. Um, we've got a, a little deal uh, going that uh, I work one New Year's on and one New Year's off, and this is my one New Year's on. Uh, so this year I'll be I'll be playing up in Grand Bend. Uh, it's a private party up there uh, at the Oakwood Resort, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Nice. Yeah. Private party. Oh, so I can't come. Yes. Um, oh, well, hey, maybe maybe I can get you on the VIP list. One that fans can come watch mm, let's see this year um it, it hasn't been set in stone yet uh i do believe that we'll be playing at moxie's right here in london mm -hmm. uh, so we'll have some of our team there uh we should have some of our team at oliver twists um a restaurant in the uh, covent garden market really nice place we play there every saturday um as well a nightclub out in chatham called tonic um and a few other things they're still kind of being set up right now new year's is funny because we'll have people who will book it two years ahead of time and people who will try to book it two weeks ahead of time so oh, wow. that's kind of where we're at right now yeah so is there anything you're struggling with in your business? Oh boy. Um, day to day stuff, you know, uh, 
I guess it's a cliche answer, but you know, the, the time factor for sure, it seems like there's never enough time to, to get out all the ideas and talk to all the people you want to talk to. Um, so I'd say that's probably my number one thing right now is trying to find the, the balance of time to get everything done. Yeah. Yeah. Plus you have a day job. I do. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's like completely night and day right now. So, uh, I'm trying to, to find the balance of that and of the family at home. And it's a, it's a, it's a tricky situation. What would you say to those thinking about starting or becoming a DJ as well? I would wholeheartedly encourage it. Um, I would also say it's uh, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. I've been working on this for over 15 years now, um, and I'll probably never be happy with where I'm at, but I'm, I'm you know happier all the time with, with what's going on with it. Um, but just stick with it because there's going to be a lot of reasons um, that you might think of getting out of it. But if, if you love it, if you love it how I love it, then stick with it and it'll be worth it. Good. Any other advice you'd give those starting their own business? Um, I would say, you know, very much along the same lines, you just have to have that tenacity um, and, and maybe pick and choose who and what you're going to pay attention to. Um, I think if I had have taken all the advice that was given to me along the way, I would be in a very different position. So I think, you know, to figure out what, what you truly believe in and then, and then take the advice from the people that you truly value. Is there any advice along the way that you didn't quite agree with? Um, yeah, we had some people who said, you know, you should you should diversify into other areas that, you know, uh, might on paper seemingly be a little more profitable or, you know, other areas that seem like they might be relatable. But I think at the end of the day, if, if you don't have a passion to drive you the way that I have the passion that, that drives me to DJ is that you're not going to you're not going to put forth the same effort. Right. So, mm. sure, we could have we could have ventured off into other areas. Um, but you know, if I don't, if I don't care about replying to an email on time or, or showing up on time, then how long am I really going to be successful at that? True. Yeah. Just the details too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any marketing strategies that you can share? Mm, yeah. Well, without giving away all my secrets, <laughs> um, I would say to diversify, I have found um, probably one of the things that's been the most beneficial to me um, is to develop, pardon me, develop a reputation. So by the time I get in front of you know, a, a potential client is that they already have a bit of an image in their head of what we offer um, okay. so that I don't need to kind of sell my services. I can just kind of, you know, we can, we can talk about whether or not what we do specifically is going to be a good fit for them. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Perfect. It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Where can we find more information or follow you around? Absolutely. Um, pretty much any of the, uh, the major social media. Easiest way to get a hold of me is through the website, which is just djalpha.ca. Uh, of course, facebook.com uh, backslash djalpha, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Mixcloud. It's all out there uh, and you can find it all through our website. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for watching and listening to this episode. We're going to roll out quite a few of these as we count down to our 100th episode. You can catch them all at LondonPreneurs.ca. We'll see you next time.